Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. With us today, Zach Hine, our marketing director. Adam Weatherby, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we uh, we wanted, it's, it's like three days before Christmas. Uh, and as is kind of like this time of year, you, you think about what happened this year. And maybe we look forward a little bit of what's going to happen next year. But, Adam, people would love to hear from you a little bit of a year in review. What, what could you tell us about this year? It was normal, you know, not, no challenges. No, historic. <laughs> I would say it was a historic year on so many fronts. A record-breaking demand of the products that we make in our country of, of sorts that we'd never seen before. And harder to get it to people than ever before. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, new customers and ecstatic customers and and then sometimes upset customers when they can't get stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So it's it's been, it's had its highs and its its lows. You know, we've, uh, um, you know, we, we will, by year end, have shipped out more guns and ammo than we have in the 76 years of history of our company in any single year by far. And so... <laughs> it's like, but still, there are people that are probably listening going, but my custom gun that's backordered I don't have, or the box of ammo I need I don't have. So, you know, it's been, it seems like, you know, there's been a lot of that, you know. Well, while so many big wins, it's like, wow, it's, uh, the demand is insane. It's been a crazy year. If, if we go back to January, there was, uh, basically there was no shows this year. Mm-hmm. Very, very few. We didn't go to really any, any shows. Um there was no shot show. Mm-hmm. There, a lot of the you know, yeah. the, a lot of the B two B shows that maybe some people even haven't heard of. Some yeah. of the buy group shows. Those yeah. didn't. A lot of those didn't happen. So it, it, from from my perspective, it changed a lot how we do some of the business that nobody ever sees. You know, guns mm-hmm. just show up on a shelf somewhere. But a lot of work went th- into that to make yeah. that happen. And that whole process has changed dramatically this year. Yeah. Um, and and people are. Our customers, our dealers, and our distributors are ordering a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got, golly, like you said, more more orders than ever. And right. I mean, we're it's it's, it's kind of stinks from your sper- perspective, Adam. But like, we've left a lot of money on the table because right. we just can't get enough things. Right, right. Yeah, if we yeah, I mean, it's all all time you know sales record from that standpoint of people liking our product and going, I want one or a hundred <laughs> or whatever the cases may be. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, but you got to just be grateful for it. It's a year, I think, of just real gratitude looking back going, you know, there's some, some highs and some lows and different things as far as the overall business is concerned. But it's, it's uh, you know, we look at, like I said, the amount of guns and ammo we shipped mm-hmm. and, the, you know, with the new models and the, you know, just a whole lot of different things. It's neat to see, you know, we've got a lot of first time gun owners or a lot of first time Weatherby customers. And that's really exciting for us to have first time Weatherby users that are out there. And you see that on the forums, Mm -hmm. you know, on social media and different places to see, man, I finally, finally got my first Weatherby. So I've seen a lot of that this year. So with the influx of, you know, firearms that we've shipped, it's, it's got a lot of new uh, people in the Weatherby family, which is pretty exciting for us. Yeah, you know, you and I have talked about this a fair amount. Like off the record, Adam is um, some of the we we we're both and Zach, you're on them too. Um, all three of us are on a lot of the Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a lot of product launches this year, mm-hmm. um, new ones, especially in Mark Five. We've pretty much revamped mm-hmm. Mark Five altogether again mm-hmm. two years later. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of there was a fair amount of people throwing shade out there about, oh, you're getting away from getting away from Weatherby's roots. And um, I, I think that we're absolutely following Weatherby's roots because Roy Roy chose to do it different than what was being done at the time. Do we have another new Woodstock gun? No, we don't. But um, I thought maybe we could talk about that a little bit. We launched the uh, the Backcountry 2.0, mm-hmm. the 
2.0 carbon, the Mark 500, um, those don't have a Monte Carlo stock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was different. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of years, people knew Weatherby as that. Mm-hmm. But when we launched the original backcountry back in 2019, we learned a few things that, um, that's for, for one, it's a good way to shape weight. Um, it's easier to make an ambidextrous stock when you don't have the Monte Carlo kind of cheek mm-hmm. rise there. Um, and at the end of the day, we're, we're, we think we're chasing where the market's going. We're not even chasing. I think we're leading where the mm-hmm. market's going with the ultra right. lightweight stuff, hunting guns that are capable of shooting a thousand yards. No problem. I mean, pretty, pretty neat stuff. Well, you've seen it at some of the riders. Yeah. Some say. of the, the, the riders that get behind a gun, they, you know, sight the gun in at our range here and then take it out, shoot it at three, seven, and a thousand, and just are within a box of ammo, just amazed mm-hmm. that that gun that's that light can get deliver that performance. It's it's awesome. Very comfortably. Yeah. Yeah, without the recoil. Yeah. But yeah, I think that amount, you know, we had some events this year, media events, you know, and, and they just go, Wow, how do we this is amazing. Within ten rounds, we got them shooting sub ammo away at a thousand yards and, and it's a hunting gun, not a you know, not it's some not big old it barrel wasn't on purpose it built no, to be a, a thousand no. yard steel banger, no, right? No. But I think also, you know, coming back to what you said, Luke, about the the whole kind of wood situation, it's like I, I always want to, you know, keep us with a foot in that past, in that history, and to mm-hmm. enjoy that rich history and a part of what we are. And you know, we still make the Mark V Deluxe or the Vanguard Sporter, Camilla, and there's some wood products that are there, and certainly our 18i Deluxe and our mm-hmm. shotgun line or even in our, our element shotgun line, there are going to be those, you know, wood pieces that are there that, that we still hold on to as a, as a piece of who we are. We know people walk in and see a Mark V Deluxe and the pistol grip cap and the Rosewood for and all those things are, are uh, you know, synonymous with Weatherby. But at the same time, we're going to answer to the demands of our customers and what they're looking for. If they're looking for something lighter weight and more durable – I hate to say it, but there are things that are more practical for lightweight and durability uh, <laughs> than wood. And, you know, we're doing a lot in carbon fiber now. And so we're seeing that. Yep. So the same way that Roy Weatherby was innovative in the 50s is really, I, I would hope, what we're seeing today. And frankly, it's people say, oh, you know, sometimes I all hear like, well, and it's all about business and sales. I'm like, well, uh, the <laughs> well, sales show us what customers want. <laughs> Correct. So what we're getting orders of shows us we can see what the demand is it's pretty yeah. easy for us and then we adjust our product line to fit the demands of our customers so i would see that as customer oriented product you yeah know, product in, focus in 2019 when we kind of revamped the mark fives quite a bit uh, at that point we dropped the mark five sporter and we dropped the vanguard deluxe because we realized that people that were that wanted a deluxe stock a really nice stock they were more likely just going to buy a mark five and it was kind of opposite with the sporter right on a mark five sporter wood stock they just went with the vanguard sporter it was more of the budget option and so we we cleaned up because that's what the data said to do it right. wasn't just a rash decision like don't like that one anymore it's gone <laughs> no typically if something sells well we won't discontinue it typically <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's just not good business to do that <laughs> correct <laughs> yeah so but what's exciting is that we've seen you know the demand i think even this past year and with the reception of you know our our carbon fiber and the, you know that peak 44 stock and just the different things that are out there mm-hmm. and our carbon fiber barrels uh, we're seeing an increase in sales in those and folks seeing the accuracy I think with that barrel that we're yep. using for that so it's it's really shown us a lot so we've learned a lot this past year in regards to what our customers want yeah and and we we threw some new stuff out there we, you know really it was two years ago but with this revamp this past year we 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 really added to. Um, what the lineup was, and I think we we even further refined the backcountry with the backcountry 2.0, mm-hmm. and then we have the Mark 500, mm-hmm. which we're hitting a price point that we hadn't been able to hit before in the Mark right. 5, right. Um, and it still looks awesome and shoots great, and so um, I I'm I'm really proud that we were able to bring that product to market. It mm-hmm. looks great, um, yeah. and out of the gate they're selling really really well. Yeah, yeah, I think people are getting a good. Good feature set for that price point in Mark V, which is which is fun. So and Zach Zach's a big shotgun guy. If you don't know Zach and big bird hunter, so uh, the new twenty gauge the twenty has gauge been exciting this yeah, year too. Yeah, the Orions. So. Um, 
we've we've taken them all over and chased all sorts of birds with them. Um, yeah. They've done very well. Yeah. Um, so we've mostly had the uh, the twenty eight inch glossy so far. Mm-hmm. And we've got shipments of the of the twenty six inch Mac coming through. And I mm-hmm. think Sportings are are waiting in the wings. So uh, we should have that full line about three weeks out on those real quick. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, for folks that want to get guns for uh, trap and sporting clays this spring, mm-hmm. uh, they will be rolling. So so Luke, kind of you know coming from you know since you're over one of the areas you oversee sales and you'd mm-hmm. say you know for folks wanting to find a gun it's just hard right now yeah what do you tell them you know like look man i got my eyes on this how do we do it because we aren't able to keep up with demand uh you know we've yep. um you know we've we've done a bunch of things and just to throw it out there i mean we've we've increased our workforce by about 30 percent. we've invested in new machines a lot of capital put into uh you know increased production we've expanded our supply chain um, we've really done a lot, spent a lot of money and a lot of time to try to meet demand. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we've shipped out more guns and ammo than we ever have, but we're not still able to meet it in, in different categories. Yeah. We get closer than others, but we're just, we're ramping up as hard as we can. And we got the throttle down, but even with that, we're not meeting it. What do you tell that customer? Yeah. You know, it's, it, that's a, that's a tough question to answer because and that's why I asked. I, I know I, I like to, well, I want to respect your, uh, privacy, I guess, as a, as a, private business owner we're not a public company so we don't have to publish every single data point on you know gross sales and whatnot but um i'd summarize it like this is we we're just about back ordered a year on almost everything so um outside of shotguns but vanguards mark fives and ammo we do our best to honor orders in the order that we got them uh but there's sometimes reasons we can't quite do that because we we don't always have the perfect mix of parts coming in to build uh, a certain gun at, that was maybe ordered prior to the gun that we can build. So instead of just sitting on components, what we're doing right now is we're we're building what we can and getting what we can out the door to the absolute best of our ability. And sometimes that changes a few times a day <laughs> when, right. when uh, we realize, oh, we're out of a certain thing or whatever. And um, we our processes have gotten so much better here in the past year, and I think that happens a whole lot less. Like we're we're doing, I think, really well. But um, the answer to the to the guy that asked, like, why can't I get a gun? It's like, man, all your buddies are buying guns, and they just beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the bottom line. Even when we say sold out in certain areas, like Vanguard, it's almost about a year. So, you know, just what about our capacity out. is, it's mm-hmm. a year now. But that in Mark Five is less, so we can mm-hmm. respond quicker we can. to Mark Five, and we have a little more, more control over that process. But, but even with Vanguard's, what that means though is it's not that you can't get one as a customer, as a in what we call Correct. end user, because you got to remember we have to sell. Uh, for the most part, majority of our guns have they go through FFL holders, and so yeah. our customers are also that you know retailer and distributor. But just because it's sold to them doesn't mean that it's. It's got the end user's name on it. Most of them don't have the end Correct. user's name. They're, right. they're, they, they buy them on speculation that they think they're going to be able to sell them. Yeah. So what it means is you got to check with probably, you have to be more diligent right now to check with more retailers. And so if you're looking and ask them, hey, do you have a backcountry on order? If they don't have one on their shelf and they say no, you might want to go find somebody else who does. Or just make sure you actually get an order in with that retailer because yes. yes. it's a lot of what they do to get guns. They they might ask us if we have one, but then they're going to go to the distributors. Yes. Um, and so they're going to kind of leverage their relationships mm-hmm. with the distributors. And the better relationship they have, right. the more odds they're going to get the next one that comes in on a shipment. Yeah. In, um, in theory, the role in the marketplace of the distributor is kind of that warehousing. Uh, yeah. You know, us as the a buffer. manufacturer, it doesn't behoove us to just sit on a lot of inventory so what we want to do is ship it to either a retail uh, shop or a distributor where then they're buying on spec as well thinking okay i think i can sell this many of this thing and then they um can be potentially they can be had from a dealer Mm -hmm. yep yeah yeah then there's and that's kind of on guns. Then there's, I think, you know, we should probably hit on the ammo situation again as much as we talk yeah. about it. Um, the ammo situation is a tough situation across the board. It, it is hard. You know, I think most people, if you're listening to this podcast, you just, you know that ammo is tough across the board. It's not just us. Um, there, it, it's hard to say the exact, exact root cause, but uh, there's more guns being purchased than ever before that started back in 2019 really um and we had 
what was the number? Seven million plus new eight, gun owners. Eight, yeah, eight 20, million. 20. Yeah. Um, that attach a few boxes of ammo per per new gun sold, and all of a sudden you're at just copious amounts of ammo, and everybody's back, you know, backpedaling trying to figure out what to do. That rippled back through the supply chain, and so the guys that make brass or the guys that make primer or powder or projectiles, all of a sudden they're spread really, really thin. Yeah, and then what happens is, you know, what I keep saying is a lot of guys are like, yeah, I'm not a hoarder. I'm not going to hoard any ammo, and then some guys are, like, proud to be hoarders. But yeah. then the guys, I got a container full. The guys who aren't, <laughs> because obviously, you know, we don't make two, two, three, and 9 mil, you know, so it's like, wait, what yeah. are these guys hoarding? 300 Weatherby and 240 Weatherby. What? But what happens is it's just human nature. You go and you see an empty shelf when it's ready for hunting season, and you go, I've never experienced this. I can't find you know, 300 mm-hmm. Weatherby. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, but couldn't find 30 out 6 or 6 5 Creed more than anything else. And so they go and they go three to four times, and they might have used to been a two to three box guy. That two to three box guy goes back and there's eight boxes. That's now an eight box guy yeah. or seven. <laughs> he's if a, he's nice an eight to, to, eight to ten box guy now. Correct. Yeah. And so that's changed. You times that times everybody. <laughs> yeah. And we're producing and shipping more ammo than we ever have, and we're out of more than we ever have been. So Correct. it's it's crazy. So well, and we've we've actually expanded production since the last time you said that on this podcast. Um, so our, our ammo production is, is growing and growing every single, we actually know, months. got a new ammo load machine, uh, five days ago, yeah. four days ago, yeah. just got up online another one. And we will, you know, it looks like from what we have an order from components and our load schedule next year, we're going to blow what we did in 21 as far as ammo production in 22 we'll blow that out of the water and we're hoping that gets some more on shelves for you you know you guys that are listening trying to find ammo that it can get out there but i guess my message is and i think our message is i am doing everything possible we are doing everything possible to try to have you know a weatherby customer with a weatherby cartridge rifle to have ammo there and we have things on order we're launching even new products. We have used new powders. Obviously, everything goes through extensive testing. If we even launch new projectiles that we hadn't used before, yeah. we have to – it's a whole lot more work for us because we got to make sure the accuracy and velocity, ballistics, all those things line up, the loadability, commercial loadability of it. We have to verify all that, but also be looking for new bullet lineups from Weatherby because you may go, well, I've always been a nozzle ballistic tipper, a nozzle acubon guy. Yeah. And, you know, for instance – you just used on a deer hunt the, yeah, I, the Scirocco in place of what? Yeah, it's it, a bond of bullets. I would have shot a 140 Acubon. I shot a 130 Scirocco. I was I was blown away. At Made the by perform- Swift. Yeah, mm-hmm. blown away at the performance of that bullet. It 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 was bad medicine for deer. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> so there are times like that. Uh, where we may not be able to get one bullet, and if it makes it through our testing from a terminal performance and accuracy, velocity, uh, you know, type of thing, then we're going to launch that bullet. And, and you make, ah, oh, I've been an Acubon guy. I don't want to go short. But it's like, well, you may need to wait another year then if we can't get those bolts from Nosler and we get those bolts from Swift and they load up to our specs, we're going to do that. So there's going to have to be flexibility on the customer's part. It, it may be it's hard to do when you got your load dial or maybe a custom dial on your scope or something. I, we understand, but we we're doing our best. So, yeah, we are. And that, that's, that's probably the worst case scenario is if you've got a custom dial that's matched to a certain bullet, then yeah, yeah, that that's tough. And Mm -hmm. you know, all we can say is sorry, but you know, Mm -hmm. If you want to shoot something, maybe shoot what you can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so. we have so many ammo components on order, it's uh, not even funny. Now, some of those dates are pushed back significantly, so we don't know when it'll actually mm-hmm. slow down. But uh, but we, you know, just the message is we, we know that, that that is one of the absolute top priorities of Weatherby right now, you know, is to is to, to get on top of that ammo thing. But it's not because we're sitting around twiddling our thumbs. <laughs> so no, people no, it's, it's always not. funny. That you think they go like, oh, why aren't you guys doing ammo? It's like, well, no, this is actually a business, and we employ people, and we like to stay in business. So to load ammo is actually good for us as well. <laughs> so remember, this goes both ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you touched a little bit on headcount, Adam. I mean, a lot of that headcount is in, in, in ammo. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're loading here. We're packing mm-hmm. ammo. Mm-hmm. Um have we we haven't quite doubled from a year ago, but I bet it's pretty close. As far as people headcount yeah. in total or in yeah. ammo? No, just uh, total people. Yeah, not double, but not like double. I said, I think probably thirty percent increase over a year ago. Substantial, so. but we've doubled 
uh, you know, since we moved here into this building two and a half years ago, we've doubled our headcount exactly yeah. since then. So, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, well, and we're, and we're getting full. We're, I mean, <laughs> we're having to shuffle things on that manufacturing <laughs> floor to, yeah. to make things fit. We had the Weatherby so. Christmas party last night. And it was a great turnout. And I realized looking around, oh, wow, this, uh, this place has really grown. So <laughs> my dad was there and sharing about the old years of meeting in much smaller venues. So it's exciting to see the, the growth at Weatherby for sure. And yeah, he talked about meeting so. at their house at one point. Yeah, yeah, that, that was different. <laughs> yeah, that was different. Yeah. Um, so there's there's been a lot going on this year from a product standpoint, from a sourcing standpoint. There's been a lot of challenges, but we've also had some success in the field. I thought that might mm-hmm. be fun to talk about. So yeah. um, you had a couple pretty good hunts this year, Adam. Yeah. Like uh, a s- small mule deer, maybe. You know. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. No, I think you know. First off, I think a couple. A couple of my funnest moments this year were um, it had been some years counting uh, for my son to harvest his first elk, and I was able to take him out. Yeah. He shot a bull elk, and then my nephew, who turned 12, had yet to shoot a big game animal, just passed his hunter safety, and he came out here, doesn't live in Wyoming, and was able to have him connect on his first buck. So those two first, first for my son, first, first elk, and nephew, first, first deer were a mm-hmm. couple personal highlights. Yeah, um, I had mine, a, I so. had a few moments like that. You did, yeah. That's right. I got, I got my son yeah. trip because he, he's twelve. He turned yeah. twelve, and uh, he got his first mule deer, his first white tail deer that was like probably the best white tail deer he'll ever shoot. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> solid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then just this past weekend, we went out waterfowl hunting together, and he shot his first ducks and first goose, <laughs> and he put on a shooting clinic too. He yeah, did, he didn't miss. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. Well, I actually had one of my first. I had to move to Wyoming to draw my first Kansas antelope tag. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> I couldn't couldn't draw a, a Wyoming antelope tag to save my life, even trying for a doe tag, and uh, had to go back to Kansas. You didn't to draw shoot. a doe tag? No. Oh, my God. How do you do that, Zach? <laughs> I'm <not> talented. <laughs> yeah. Very talented. That's no. not a good talent. But you shot a nice goat out there in Kansas. That is pretty yeah. decent, yeah. 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 Yep. So it wasn't the big one that we were after day after day, but yeah. um, he, um, you know, He's eating great, and uh, he's a pretty respectful goat. So happy to have done that. I got to shoot my first sharp tails out here in, in Wyoming just the other day. And, uh, yeah, just kind of pretty excited for next year's uh, bird season. I think yeah. things are getting pretty icy and pretty cold for yeah. uh, some of the upland I've been doing. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, looking looking forward to uh, maybe some turkeys this spring. So Cool. Yeah, no, I was – and I was uh, – yeah, Shot a nice mule deer. It was second year in a row out here in Wyoming. I was able to shoot a mule deer over 30 inches wide, so that was kind of kind of fun. So settling into Wyoming, I guess you would say. Yeah. In the big bucks that are up in the in the mountains here. There's no bu- no so. big bucks here. Nope. Nope. We nope. well, keep shooting them. All. <laughs> well, right. They were here, but they, they're gone. They're gone yep. now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was that was fun. Um, yeah. Did another did did a hunt with a buddy on that. That was a blast. And then. Um, did an elk hunt and it's funny Connor and I my son and I both shot big uh, busted elk big mature elk big obese old elk with broken main beam on one side past the fourth so mm-hmm. we, we uh, kind of both did that this year so uh, but it was that was that was super fun wanted to shoot a big old mature bull and was able to do that and then yeah Connor like you know he just shot the first rag Raghorn he'd seen or <laughs> something, and right then we roll. ended up finding him a big old busted bull. So that was that was Connor shot. Fun, that so. was a great first mm-hmm. elk. That was kind of like Trip's first white yeah, tail. Yeah, like too good was, to be a first. Yeah, that was yeah, that was crazy. But you never know what's gonna stumble out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. And um, we had one of our partners in last week. Uh, final approach. We did a bunch of waterfowl hunting, and we had some great day. I mean, weather was perfect um, here for waterfowl. We got snow the night before and and the first day of our hunt and it just got better throughout the week we we've been warm i mean we've been blessed with an incredible fall except for opening day of rifle season like that's been happening a couple years or rifle elk season october 15 it's like snowed then last year and this year and it's like nasty for two days and then it's just gorgeous and it has been until basically last week Mm -hmm. week before christmas it's crazy yeah yeah uh, so Adam, what's, uh, what, what do you look forward to to next year? Mm. Business perspective. Sure. Sure. A well, good question. I think, uh, 
you know, a, a lot of our big focus, to be honest with you, is trying to fulfill the demand that's out there. I mean, it doesn't sound that exciting unless somebody that's listening is waiting for something that would be exciting for them. <laughs> so a big part is a lot of internal things that you hear in Sheridan, Wyoming, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, uh, you know, ongoing, uh, you know, gain deficiencies, some, you know, spending some more money to get some more things out the door and hiring people where necessary and all that kind of stuff to really get some things, get some things out there. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to doing that. Even, you know, our custom lead times, I don't like that our custom shop lead times, you know, we, they're, I think, at 120 days right they now. And, yeah. And it's like, man, I'd love to get that back to 90. So I'd love to just do that. So when we have somebody say, man, I want a Weatherby, that we can get it in their hands quicker. So definitely going to be focusing uh, on that this next year and, and really trying to get on top of all-time record-breaking demand in the history of histories. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Usually, you know, the year after an election, it starts to slow down. This year it did not next year at least at this point shows no signs of slowing and um, it's typically this time of year on the sales side of the house that we're gearing up for all the sales shows we're trying to figure out what are the programs for next year what can we put on promotion and now it's it's not that like we're like I mentioned before we're just about sold for next year on uh, not on every category but but just about our and uh, it's it's a it's a shift now on to what what can we what can we how can we get the most out the door as possible um and and one thing we didn't talk about that we probably should have a minute ago is we've had to navigate through some price increases um which are hard and we don't want to do that uh but we got to stay in business and with everything going on in the market just people know everything's more expensive from gas to houses to raw brass i mean everything has just gone up and uh, we absorbed that for as long as we could but um, just several weeks ago we had to roll out a price increase and um, it's it's a bummer but as we were just looking today at some of our competitors pricing it, everybody else has had to do it too it's yeah we we're a, looking and we're like no that one thing's priced at this i'm like wait it just went up 200 dollars <laughs> i just looked at it yeah <laughs> so it's certainly crazy and what we want to keep those prices down we'll do all we can here on everything we do to, to do that, to keep the price down for the customer as much as possible. And well, I think that's, you know, just a thing to throw out there too. And with the ammo is like, uh, we're not gouging. It, it, our margins have not gone up at all. It, in fact, no. price increases <laughs> to absorb part of that, you know, huge cut that we've had just with all the raw components. And, and so now are there some retailers or online retailers that are price gouging? Yes. Um, there's some great, you know, great guys out there who aren't, uh, but uh, you know, you got to watch out for that out there right now. Folks that are saying, wow, I have this. I can just charge in a ridiculous amount for something, you know, and it's yeah. happening in all industries right now. But Yeah, the the price increase to me has been one of the most frustrating things that to deal with this past year just because we fought. So part of the move to Wyoming, uh -huh. it was to get yeah. costs down. And, and we were we were getting our <laughs> costs We were doing down. it. We were doing and it. And then all the things cost so much money now. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a huge, yeah. huge challenge. Sure. Uh, but. Um, I think we've been navigating it pretty well, um, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're all used to it. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, we we you go it's to the store now. Aspect of life. You go I mean, to the store everywhere. now, and you just expect that you can't get all the everything you went to get. <laughs> Dude, like, when well, Walmart so. was out of bananas. I'm like, this world's messed up. <laughs> like, I went three times in a row and I had no bananas. Well, <laughs> your Amazon Prime that you pay hundred dollars a year for, you now get your products in two weeks sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Would, if would, yeah. if not longer. Cute. Well, we also live in Sheridan, Wyoming, so yeah. it doesn't help yeah. either. <laughs> Maybe the guy living in New York City is a little different. I don't know, but but no, well, we we will. And I, you know, I just want anybody listening to know our commitment to you know we'll do that. And heck, we're not afraid to drop prices if things go back down on our end. We want to. We want to yeah. remain competitive uh, out there uh, for the product that they're getting. Make sure that we don't slip quality. We're not going to go with a bad supplier or or uh, you know bring down the quality of a particular either product or component or anything to try to shave that though. So we. We are gonna. We got a seventy-six-year-old brand. We gotta, we gotta uphold. So we're also not gonna cut the fences, mm -hmm. you know, cut corners mm -hmm. or whatever to, to to bring that quality down too. So it's important to us. Yeah, and um, one of the one of the last things I wanted to touch on too is um, as we look forward to next year is um, some shows. We didn't really do any shows in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. So long as they have them, yeah, we're going to be yeah. attending a few. So um, if you are planning on going to Dallas Safari Club, 
the Wild Sheep Foundation show, the uh, Western Hunt Expo that's kind of paired up with Mule Deer Foundation in Salt Lake City, uh, and then we'll be we'll be at SHOT attending, mm -hmm. but we're not exhibiting at mm -hmm. SHOT show. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were not going to be exhibiting last uh -huh. year, and then yeah. COVID kind of came yeah. around, but... Um, we'll still be there and big supporters of NSSF and for sure and, uh, love what they're doing but uh, this year not going to be exhibiting there um, so yeah so if you're around at, at those shows be sure to sure to come in and see us um, in person in person which is weird these days yeah so and well, hopefully not with masks on but most likely with masks and on <laughs> as always too one of the neat things about moving here to Wyoming is the amount of traffic we get in and out of here most often and not coming up in the winter but in the summer and hunting season is people traveling through and we're in between you know kind of Yellowstone and then kind of Rushmore and different national parks out here and we're just off the beaten path and and so we get a lot of people in here and it's a chance to you know uh, you know see our place here and uh, you know, we got a little showroom and, you know, little things for sale and kind of touch our products and hold them and feel them and just kind of pay a visit, walk away with a hat or whatever and say visit the Weatherby factory. And so it's kind of it's fun for people to be able to do, too. So it's another way to see us. And in California, we didn't have that as much. And here it's yeah. been been a surprising kind of fun part of uh, being out here is being able to have people come visit. So. Yeah, culture down in the showroom does a mm -hmm. great job trying yeah. to make as many people happy as possible. But but people come in here expecting us to have ammo. And, and they and we don't just hoard it. They expect <laughs> us to have tours, but we're not a museum. We are an active factory, and in an effort to meet the demand that's out there, instead of hiring people to give tours and have them run through our shop and have to rearrange things, we're actually at max efficiency to produce products because that's what we do. <laughs> so there's the disclaimer too. If you come by and want the uh, grand tour, uh, we do have you know a showroom and visitor center set up, but not a yeah full a full products on display. Yeah, um, uh -huh. and then. That's a lot of a lot of history down there too. Uh -huh. So yeah, you get a little time, you can kind of poke around and see quite a bit of stuff from mm -hmm. from all the years of weather. Yeah. So. As far as looking forward to twenty two as well, it's always like, hey, what's next? It's like this mm -hmm. time of season, hunting season ends and yeah. gets into the winter. You start dreaming about next hunting season and and well, things. So uh, what are you guys dreaming of for hunting season in twenty two? Mm -hmm. I'm if dreaming. I, I've got a big one. Um, I, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before, but at Wild Sheep Show. 2019 oh yeah i won the um less than one eye uh mid-asian ibex hunt in tajikistan if you uh, don't understand what he just said <laughs> he won a hunt in a faraway country yeah i did uh <laughs> for the largest of the ibex species and it's been very hard to plan that hunt with COVID and mm -hmm. all that's been going on in the world. So right now I'm looking at maybe trying to pull that off in August yeah. as, uh, you know, political climate permitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's the goal. I'm pretty yeah. excited about that. I think mm -hmm. that one will be a true adventure. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pumped. That's cool. That is going to be one. amazing. If, yeah. if you don't come back, then... I don't know You'll what to tell back. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I don't come back, then most likely uh, <laughs> my wife will be a little better off financially with the okay. life insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Yeah. You might have a few more headaches, Adam. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, will you give me a hand? <laughs> I could definitely. Uh, what about you? Up there. What about you in twenty two? Uh, this could so be about I've birds, folks. Disclaimer: well, Zach loves birds. Could it be about bird dogs? So oh. I've got, yeah, I've got a young bird dog, which is there. actually what bird dog or bird hunting is about. Oh yeah, right. it's yeah. mostly about following. Uh huh. Dog. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we've got a little cocker spaniel that this was her first season, and so she didn't get as much as I would have liked, but she did get some good time out, and I think next year she's going to kind of come into her own. Mm -hmm. So um, that's going to be the the really exciting thing for me is seeing her uh, kind of do her thing. Mm -hmm. So we've that's got cool. two older dogs that are that are kind of getting dialed, and she's the next one. So that'll yep. be that'll be the the highlight for me. It's cool. So, how about you, Adam? Um, I'm looking to. I still got some things up my sleeve that I'm thinking about, <laughs> but I haven't. <laughs> I don't want to say I'm on a podcast because I haven't talked to my wife about them mm, yet. Mm, but mm. as far as the ones she knows about, uh, <laughs> 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 no, uh, kind of. Uh, you know, I kind of have an infatuation for hunting mule deer and, and yeah. love mule deer and the habitat and the chase of them and. Um, so uh, planning to go on several different mule deer hunts in different states. And so have a, um, a year of the mule deer 
in um, some different western states and to kind of see how that plays out don't know if i'll harvest one in all the states i'm going after but uh um gonna be gonna be doing that in one year kind of try to to go on uh a multi mule deer hunt in some different states. So gonna be working on that. Got some points, some places, and things, and looking to do that. So that's it's gonna be fun. That one will so. be fun, and mm-hmm. if if all works out according to plan on that, then hopefully we can document that well. And, yeah, and put some. It's gonna be a pretty fil- cool potentially film a film series. I hate yeah. to kind of say it now because you never know what comes up, but as of now, you know, it could be a little film series on doing that, which will be, um, which will be fun. So yeah, really. Uh, yeah, that's probably probably that's the one I'll, I'll vocalize, and then the other ones we'll, we'll see. Yeah, so yeah. We always have those up our sleeve, right? Of like, ooh, maybe we could do this for right? sure, for sure. <laughs> the, the one that I, the other one that I'm I'm really excited about is my son. You know, we had a great first hunting season. I'm hopeful to get uh, get us together to go on an elk hunt here in the Bighorns. Um, would be pretty awesome. So, and then you know, I do put in some different states for draws and. Each year, I always like go. I always. You never know. You never, never know, know when the draw season happens. What'll what'll happen? And I tend to have pretty good luck. I mean, last year I drew an antelope and an elk. Tend to have me. pretty good luck. What are you talking about? You're like the luckiest tag drawer yeah, well, that I've ever met. That's, it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> what all the fuss is about? Yeah. yeah. He can't draw a doe over there, and I'm like, I'm drawing good buck tags and good bull tags, and yeah, your I mean, bull tag this year was, was like a five percent draw. Yeah, it was one and, of the most. Yeah, I do that. Sought after units in the whole state, and you're yeah, just like, I'll just draw first try. No it's big, no big deal, guys. It's no big deal. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but it's been like it'll be five years since I drew a sheep tag, so I'm kind of coming up again. <laughs> oh, I see where you're headed. I see where you're headed. I like, I like where your head's at right now. Uh, yeah. uh, it's going to be a good year. Uh, you know, 2021 was a great year for Weatherby, like you said, Adam. Best year in company history, um, and we've got high hopes for next year to beat it. Yeah, it'll be, t- it'll be hard. Mm-hmm. It'll be hard. Uh, but I think you have done a great job poising the company to be able to beat it. Um, I think if we don't beat it, it'll be stuff that's outside of our control. Uh-huh. Supply yeah. chain and yeah. other factors. Yeah. So um, we're in good shape and we're really looking forward to a, another great year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we'll yeah. And we'll keep pushing towards innovation. We got a lot of new products whether they'll launch at 22 it's hard sometimes we we have been holding back <laughs> product launches which is painful yeah um but we hold them back because um if you can only get so many things and people are already waiting on these things it's hard to launch more things and so um so it's painful we've kind of had to hold those back but as uh, next year or two especially a couple years you know we we're uh, we're not done and we'll no. have a lot of fun exciting product launches too so always be checking weatherby.com for what's going on is we'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, the we easiest, way to, easiest way to kind of stay apprised of that is to follow us on social media and then for sign sure. up for our newsletters. That'll that'll get you deals. It'll get you in on some of the mm-hmm. special events and promotions we do. And then uh, mm-hmm. also, uh, you know, if we're, we got something new dropping, you'll be the first to know. Mm-hmm. So for sure. Yeah. Well, well, appreciate everybody. It's, it's fun. It's humbling to be here, you know, after this amount of time and, uh, you know, like I said, ship more guns and ammo than we ever have before, and that's thanks to you, our customers, and believing in us and in our products and being a part of the Weatherby family. And it's fun to see all the new people mm-hmm. kind of kind of coming into that. And uh, we look forward to, yeah, continued growth with everybody. So Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Mm-hmm.